E. E. Cummings had dreams in a mirror. I have mine in sculpture. Before I talk about sculpture, I want to explain why I put Occam's razor theory on the screen for you to read. Occam's razor is a principle that's attributed to the 14th century logician, William of Occam. I love titles, and when I read this for the first time, I wanted to make a sculpture and give it this title. For a long time, I searched for an image before it dawned on me that all of my work was a quintessential example of this principle, but especially this sculpture, Golden Apple, Golden Spiral. Before I saw a professor in a hand-building ceramic class have his students place their vessels on a post, one on top of the other, which appeared to me as a sculpture, it never occurred to me that I could make a sculpture of any kind, much less one in a monumental size and have it on exhibit in a public place. Yet today, I have 20 sculptures in public places internationally. I immediately made small boxes that looked like the vessel I was working on at the time, and I stacked them this away and that away. And sure enough, I had my first sculpture that I called Marta's Finite Column, in deference to Mr. Brancusi and his endless column. Marta was a nickname I gave myself in my ceramics class at the University of Florida in Gainesville. It didn't take me long to realize two columns together made a stronger sculpture. As a result, my new sculpture titled Columns 1, 2, and 3 as a series was born. This experience made me realize I could make monumental public art. Now, making public art became my new dream. I then made Columns 1, 2, and 3, Series 1, in brushed aluminum on wood. It's 8 feet 2 inches high. If you're wondering, where's the third column? It's the negative space between the two columns. My very first sculpture, Marta's Finite Column, morphed into Columns 1, 2, and 3, Series 1, and then into Series 2, Series 3, Series 4, and 5. Series 1 was accepted to the Royal Academy of Art Summer Exhibition of 1989 and sold to a London corporation. Series 2 in automotive paint can be seen today at the Dell JCC campus in Austin, Texas. Series 3 in Corten Steel can be seen in New York State's Wart Pound Ridge Reservation in Westchester, New York as well as in Tyler Sculpture Garden in Tyler, Pennsylvania. They were also on exhibit as part of the New York City Park District's Broadway Malls on Broadway in 68 in 2006. Series 4, also in Cortan Steel and almost 16 feet high, is in a garden in Encino, California. And then I realized I needed one to exhibit, so I made Series 5 which is two feet high. Making sculpture became the center of my life because I found I could use it as a means to accomplish another dream, which was to live and work in foreign cities. I was inspired by an artist friend who had spent his summers working in Japan while on vacation from teaching art at the University of Florida. Specializing in public art has fulfilled the dream of working while living in Paris and London several times, Buenos Aires, India, and Israel. Public art, I think, is a real gift to the community. It enhances, it enhances whatever area it's in with an aesthetic that can only be achieved by art to blend with the art of nature that surrounds it. Most of my work is inspired by something I've read and I feel passionate about. I find when I make a sculpture from a particular idea, I feel connected with the author. I love that feeling. Here is a picture of three sculptures that were inspired by ideas from books I read. 
Feynman Fancy came from the book Genius, where I saw that Feynman painted his diagrams on his van. It then occurred to me to make sculpture out of these diagrams. From the book I Ching, I chose I Ching 24, which I used to represent Carl Jung's theory of synchronicity. Lastly, the book Flatland by Edwin Abbott Abbott inspired this society of flatlanders. Each of these geometric shapes represent a person in flatland. A visiting artist gave a talk and a demonstration at the University of Florida. I was impressed that he made these huge slabs of clay and stacked them in a way that became a doorway. That must have been in the back of my mind when I was cutting a piece of wood for a new sculpture when all of a sudden I noticed what I had cut could be the beginning of a portal. What also intrigued me was that it reminded me of something, although I couldn't quite remember what it was. I continued to make portal number one, series one in walnut, and used liquid gold to paint one of my fishing weights to use as a feature. It was only later that I remembered why what I had made looked familiar. When I was a photographer, I discovered a book with very colorful photographs of Luis Aragon's exciting architecture. The photo on the left is from that book. I'm sure it's what made me think of the sculpture I made look familiar. Making my first portal inspired me to make a series of portals and then portals in the form of labyrinths. Labyrinths can be thought of as a portal to your center. There are many small images here, perhaps making it a bit harder to see details individually, but I wanted you to see my portals all at once to show you how the labyrinths look took over and they transitioned from my original portal series. All the labyrinths were initially designed to be installed in the ground, but soon became finger labyrinths for the wall and sculpture for the floor and the wall. I was going to have a solo sculpture and labyrinth exhibit in Malaga, Spain. I wanted to be able to bring them in my luggage rather than ship them to Spain, so I made the labyrinths on canvas to hang on the wall like a scroll as finger labyrinths. I used these finger labyrinths in this format for pop-up labyrinth exhibits that are installed for as short a time as one afternoon or evening or longer. In addition to the labyrinth exhibit I had in Malaga, Spain, I've had pop-up exhibits in Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, Gainesville, Florida, Modine, Israel, and Chartres, France, where I'll be exhibiting them again this coming July. What's nice about making sculpture is that many different mediums can be used to produce a slightly different effect using the same design. A good example of this is my Stemrose Labyrinth, seen here from left to right in canvas, in plexiglass, in stainless steel and gravel, in mosaic stone, and in a wool rug. I think this is just one more reason why we should be celebrating sculpture today along with people in 20 other countries that feel as I do. They too have their dreams come to life in our sculptures. Thank you for allowing me to share my sculptures with you.